Well, I would like to welcome uh, thousands of you that are watching this either live uh, or maybe listening on the phone or watching the recorded version. Here we are, day 11 of 21 days of prayer for America. And uh, uh, we have lots of friends who have joined us by Zoom and uh, uh, several of us will be assigned to make a short presentation as well as lead us in prayer. Um, so please stay with us for the, for the full 90 minutes because we're going to be covering a lot of grounds. So everybody, let's put your seatbelt on and let's just uh, enter into a time of thanksgiving and praise. Alan Parker in San Antonio and Luann, would you unmute please? And Luann, where are you, where are you connecting from? Jamestown, North Dakota. Wow. Wonderful. So Texas and uh, North Dakota is well represented. So Alan and Luann, would you lead us in uh, a brief prayer of thanksgiving and praise for these 21 days of prayer for America? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We enter your courts with thanksgiving and praise in our hearts, Lord, and praise on our lips for the wonders that you have created, the wonderfulness of our own bodies, 70 trillion cells in the average adult. Thank you, Lord, all working together because your sound, your power keeps everything together. You designed them. We thank you for life. We thank you for this United States. I thank you particularly for the revival at the United States Supreme Court, which has been occurring over the last several years of a Christian constitutional republic. And Lord, we rededicate America to you. We consecrate it again. We're thankful for what you've done, but we want to return to you with all our heart. And we thank you, thank you, thank you for your mercy and justice and mercy, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, Father, just thank you. We are so grateful. Thank you for the technology that makes this happen. The people all over this country can join in and we can worship you and we can praise you together, Father. Thank you, Father, that you have been faithful and you will continue to be faithful, that you'll never let us down. And Father, as the results of these prayers tonight, children and young adults, and many will come to know you as Savior and Lord. And Father, that they will get it, that you are faithful and you are not going to let them down, that you are for them and never against them, and that you love them with an everlasting love, Father. Lord, we worship you. We praise you because you are worthy. You are worthy of all praise. Amen. 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 And I would like to ask uh, Pastor Willie Rash. Uh, he will be our presenter in about an hour. Uh, would you lift up Alan Parker and thousands who have been uh, mobilized by God to overturn Roe v. Wade. Alan Parker was one of the key attorneys that God used to overturn Roe v. Wade in the Supreme Court. And uh, Pastor Willie, would you also pray for life in all 50 states? Amen. Well, Father, we thank you that you love us and we gave you praise for who you are, Lord. We thank you that you are the author of life. And Lord, we pray that we would be as concerned about life as you are. And Father, we thank you for eternal life, abundant life. Father, we thank you that you're the way, the truth, and the life, and the resurrection, and the life. And Father, we thank you for what you have done at the Supreme Court and, and overturning Roe v. Wade. And Father, we thank you for Brother Parker and how you used him to do uh, help in that, Father. And we just pray you'll continue to bless and strengthen him. And Lord, we pray for life across every state. Lord, we thank you for the, for the uh, legislatures and governors, Lord, that have, have uh, moved to uh, to limit abortion as best they can. And Father, we pray that you will continue to be with them, Lord, and will uh, use them in and, and a great way. Father, we thank you for the tens of thousands of lives that have already been spared because of this. And Lord, we pray for the states, Lord, that, that have broadened their abortion uh, laws. Father, we pray that you would change hearts and protect children. And Lord, we pray that you would raise up your people, Lord, in, in every way to minister, Father, to save life and minister to families and, and that your kingdom would come, Lord. And you tell us that children 
are important, Father, to you, and of such is the kingdom of God. And so, Lord, just lead in, in every way. And, Father, we pray that, uh, that you'll forgive us of our sins of, of the abortion, Father, of inaction, Lord, of lack of prayer. And, and Father, we just pray that, that you would continue to lead us in the right direction, Father, for, for your glory and honor. Thank you for what you're doing. Lord, we trust you to continue you to, uh, to do so, Father, for your glory and honor. Christ's name. Amen. And Father, we say that uh, every man, woman, and child from womb all the way until the tomb, Lord, uh, are being called by you to cry out to you, Lord, for mercy and for life and for forgiveness and to enter into a relationship with you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that uh, you don't, uh, you see all people in America and the nations as redeemable, Lord, and that in your eyes, none of us are deplorable because all of us are made in your image. So we thank you, Lord, that we can come today and pray for what you desire for our nation, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So once again, uh, welcome to day 11 of these 21 days of prayer uh, for America. And for those of you uh, who are watching the uh, live or the recorded version, or if you have called in, projectpray.org has all the information. When you go to projectpray.org, just click on, uh, look for the 21 days of prayer, and you'll find all kinds of resources. In fact, you don't even have to wait until the evening to pray. You know that you could pray for America tomorrow morning when you first wake up, right? I mean, so so I'm so honored that I could team up with uh, uh, Sister Becky Fisher uh, in North Dakota and Pastor Willie Rash in uh, North Carolina. And my name is Daisa Pond, and uh, I'm here in Colorado Springs. So uh, we usually begin with the Word of God. So after, after I read um, this very important verse, uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, I'm going to ask uh, Timothy Kelly with the Reformation Prayer Network if you would lead us in prayer in response to God's Word. Therefore, as God's chosen people... Holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Timothy, would you lead us in a prayer? Yes, Father, I just thank you so much, Lord, for the body of Christ. I thank you, Father, for the character, Lord God, that you have bestowed within those that you call your own. I thank you, Holy Spirit, leading, guiding, and directing. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name now that you would cause our character, Father God, to be such that we are not just filled with faith to do exploits, but Lord God, that we are those, Father, that have the character to carry the call, to share you with others, to live out the life of Christ in front of others. We thank you, Father, that you would grace us with this. Father, we may have all things, but if we do not have love, Lord, then what are we? Father, if we don't treat others as we would treat ourselves, then who are we? Father, we have a call to share the gospel, to expand the kingdom of Christ throughout the entire earth. And Lord, that starts right where we are. So Father, we ask in Jesus' name now that as we progress, Father God, forward in the evening, that Lord, that we would keep this in mind. Father, the scripture that my brother just shared, and Father God, that we would live like you would live were you here. Live through us in Jesus' mighty name. And thank you, Timothy, for connecting with us from Texas. And uh, and, and in Utah, we have uh, Pam Howell. She, uh, Pam and I, we get to pray together on Saturday mornings on a platform called Prayer Surge Now. So Pam, after I read this important verse, would you also lead us in prayer? John 13, 34, a new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Pam, lead us in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for love. It says that you are love. And Father, I thank you for the word in the Old Testament, ahav, which means love. And the, the meaning of the word love is to reveal the Father. So, Father, I ask that uh, those who have seen you, who know you, that they would reveal you to all, and especially to children. 
mm. the father's love to the children not the love of the world but the love of the father so we pray that in jesus mighty name amen yeah. amen amen um you know we love because jesus first loved us right mm -hmm, yes and uh as we pray for people, even people that we may disagree with, mm -hmm. uh, God gives us love for everyone that we pray for. Uh, we get to pray for. What a what an honor we have! Uh, tonight there'll be uh, two different rounds of praying for cities and states. So in this first round, uh, we're gonna we're gonna have Bill Landers pray for the uh, Los Angeles and Long Beach area of Southern California. And then Gary Borgendale, would you lead us in prayer for your beloved state of uh, Minnesota? And I hope we, we, have, we are connected with uh, uh, Ginny Hover from Mississippi, if you will lead us in prayer for Mississippi. And then Amy Everett, uh, would you share a little bit about what is happening in Colorado with Colorado Praise? And then lead us in prayer for our current home state of Colorado. Bill, please start us off. Father God, we lift up the mighty name of Jesus over Los Angeles County, which includes Long Beach. And Father, we cry out to you that that your ecclesia, your called out ones, Lord, that you would begin to truly revive your church, Lord God, in Los Angeles County and in Long Beach. And Father, that that would <clears throat> spill over into those who need to know and hear and understand the gospel. And Father, I pray that uh, those who have been uh, blinded by the God of this age, uh, according to Second Corinthians chapter 4, Lord, that you would pour out your spirit in such a way that the enemy would no longer be able to blind, but Lord, that you would be able to penetrate the hearts and minds of those who do not know you as yet. And so, Father, we cry out to you for spiritual awakening all across Los Angeles County, Lord God, that the light of the glorious gospel would go uh, forward and penetrate the darkness like never before. We ask, Lord God, for your shock and awe of the, your physical, tangible demonstration of your goodness and your faithfulness all across Los Angeles County as you ignite your body first and then it pours out into the streets, the highways and the byways. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. And Bill serves with a great ministry called Men for Nations. Gary, would you pray for your home state of many, many waters? Thank you very much. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Lord, I come before you on behalf of Minnesota, Lord. And Lord, we pray that Minnesota would walk in its destiny of a threshing floor of hinge and history, Lord. You created Minnesota to be an apple in your eye and to do great things, Lord. So may we walk in that destiny, Lord. Lord, we pray for the peace of Minneapolis, the largest city in Minnesota, and the uprising that was related to George Floyd. And Lord, may his death not be in vain. And Lord, that peace would come upon this city. Lord, we pray for church unity, Lord, that uh, the, the streams of Christendom would come together with unity that would be an answer to Jesus' prayer when he prayed for all believers to be one. So Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing. We pray for, the, um, for revival across our state and it would spill over across this land. Bless our other prayers in this time. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I just love the name of the ministry that uh, uh, Gary serves with. It's simply called Shine. And shining the light, not only in America, but all over the world. So uh, Thank you. Uh, uh, let's have, um, do we have connection with, uh, with uh, Jenny, in, uh, Jenny in Mississippi? All right, so I'm going to ask uh, Peter Carlson in Oregon, would you just pray a blessing over the state of Mississippi? Uh, we got incredible believers there, but there's so many in every state, including Mississippi, who needs Jesus, who, who are in desperate need of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that Mississippi is on your radar. 
that you want to pour out your spirit in Mississippi upon the church, that the church will be a carrier uh, witness for you of the love of Christ that would change and transform lives from the youngest to the oldest, from the wealthiest to the poorest, from the newest resident to the longest living resident. Lord, we thank you that you're uh, interested in every person. You count the hairs on their head and uh, you know them by name. Jesus, we thank you for encouraging the people there to know you, to walk with you, and to witness for you. We ask, Father, that you would help the church to do what you designed the church to do, the government to do what it's designed to do, and that the two would work compatibly with one another to minister to the needs of people in a way that the the whole state is impacted in positive ways, and you get the glory, Jesus. And, uh, Peter, thank you for your service with Prayer Oregon. Oregon is one of the most uh, prayer network state in America, and so is here in Colorado. So, Amy Everett, would you unmute and just encourage us regarding what's happening in this in our state of Colorado and lead us in prayer. Thank you, Dice. Yeah, it's very excited. We're very excited and encouraged about what's going on in Colorado. Um, I'm director of a ministry called Colorado Praise, uh, founded by Father Phil Everhart and myself eight years ago. And currently we have four active prayer initiatives plus other partner initiatives that we support. Here's the encouragement. People want to pray, evidenced by this this meeting and how many people are engaging in it. Um, in Colorado, we have uh, four prayer initiatives. We have a church prayer watch initiative where we ask churches to host one 24-hour prayer watch every month. Um, and we have 63 churches engaged. If all of them are actively fulfilling their 24 hours, Colorado is covered in nonstop day and night prayer. So despite what you see in the news, despite how um, – ungodly things are happening here in Colorado through our legislators. Um, we are covered in prayer and things are shifting. Uh, we're beginning to see transformation in a couple of cities. It's very exciting. Second prayer, uh, initiative, we do a county prayer watch as well. Individuals that don't have churches that want to participate can sign up to pray in a 24-hour prayer watch uh, each month for their community. The third initiative we call the civic prayer teams. We have 26 civic prayer teams currently across the state. The goal is to have one in every city. The civic prayer team prays specifically for the needs of the city and prays for every civic leader by name. Ultimately, they will go and meet with every civic leader and lay hands on them and pray with them and then ask them, how can this, this city be praying for you? And that civic prayer team will then produce a quarterly prayer guide that will go out to every church in the city, encouraging the churches to pray for the needs of the city and the civic leaders. Um, and again, we have 26 of those looking forward to having 60 some eventually. Uh, and then our last initiative we call the Fields of Harvest Prayer Teams. We have over 12 teams that are focused basically on the Seven Mountain Prayer Strategy, but we've added 12 topics. Um, so we have teams praying for sports, uh, for arts and entertainment, for family, for the marketplace. We have a team for elections. Um, so the goal is to have 12 teams that are praying for a specific topic in Colorado. And then the last so, thing Amy, we're before doing you is... Pray, uh, yeah. Before you pray, uh, for, for anyone that's watching or listening, whether it's live or recorded, if anyone wants to learn about how their state, or maybe some people are calling in from connecting from Colorado, how can they get in touch with you? Do you have a website and a, and a contact yeah. information? Yeah. yeah, it's really simple. Go to CO for Colorado, CO Praise, P-R-A-Y-S. Thank you. And Amy, would you lead us in prayer for Colorado? Lord, I, I thank you and praise you that more and more and more and more of your body is, is awakened and is passionately wanting to engage in prayer. They're recognizing the value of prayer, recognizing that prayer really does change things. I thank you, Lord, for the transformational work that's starting to happen in Pagosa Springs, Colorado, in Grand Junction, Colorado. I thank you, Lord, that you are beginning to build a, a culture of spiritual oneness amongst the body of Christ here in Colorado. And I pray that over Everyone who is on this call, over your community, over your, let's start with over your family, over your church, and over your community, that there be a greater level of spiritual oneness bursting forth in community after community across 
Colorado and this nation. And I thank you, Lord, that in that oneness, there is a boldness of more and more people to engage in prayer evangelism, more and more people to pray with the waitress at lunch, to pray with the clerk at the checkout stand in Safeway, to engage with people on the street and simply show them the love of Jesus through prayer. I thank you, Lord, that you are raising up your army of intercessors who are ready to engage. So we call forth the generals who will help them engage amongst all of you on this call, amongst other people in, in the, um, uh, whether you're in leadership or not, you are called to engage in prayer and I encourage you to get involved. Thank you, Jesus, for that the army is awakening and assembling at this time. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And, and Father, uh, whether, uh, whether a revival ignites in any of the cities or states we prayed for or any place else in america lord may the uh revival fire spread all around the country father mm -hmm. i'm so desperate for spiritual awakening lord if it if it starts in san francisco if it starts in dallas if it starts in seattle and, it, and if it comes to colorado springs lord i'll take it lord i am mm -hmm. desperate Lord, and without a spiritual awakening, Father, uh, without you releasing spiritual awakening, Lord, uh, I, I I don't know what to think. I, I don't know where we're going to go, Father, as a nation. So, Lord, we thank you that you will do it, perhaps even in 2024. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, unless we are loving and discipling and commissioning our kids into ministry, uh, it's all talk. So I'm going to ask Becky, who she's going to share more about her ministry the next 30 minutes. Uh, but uh, right now, would you just share, Becky, your Becky Fisher, your passion for children and youth? And let's get let's get several of your friends to pray right afterwards. Please unmute. Uh, uh, Becky, you need to press the button to unmute. Got too excited there. Yeah, okay. Zoom is so fun, isn't it? Zoom is so fun. No. <laughs> All right. So what, honestly, when we're talking about the children of our nation, there are endless topics. We could spend 24 hours a day just praying over the issues. You've got things like sex trafficking, abuse of all kinds, indoctrination of anti-God worldviews in our schools and colleges. You've got the effects of divorce, single parent homes, fatherlessness, poverty, children with disabilities, the LGBTQ agenda that's aggressively going after our children and youth and the impact of, of, of music and media and entertainment on our youth and children. And that's just for starters. But because we have a limited time, I wanted to talk more narrowly about what's really on my heart. And that's not just not all the children, it's the children in the body of Christ. Because that's what impacts us most as the church. If we don't get our own kids, it's like if we don't save our own house, what is it, the, the rest of it all about anyway? And so um, there's an old Barna statistic from 2003 that has never been overturned. And that's that as many as 70% of our young people have leave the church when they become of age and they never return. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a crisis. Uh, what worked in the faith formation of former generations, my generation, your generation, does not seem to be working as effectively in our churches today. There's so many discouraging statistics that just keep pouring in that tell us that all is not well in the spiritual lives and discipleship of our own children and our own teenagers. While kids and teens will basically always be the same, today there's a difference simply because of the world that they're growing up in. The rules of the game have changed, and yet it seems we in the church are stuck in old wineskins of traditional youth and children's ministry, and we may have better bells and whistles, we may look more advanced and sophisticated technology-wise, but spiritually we're not as effective as raising up lifelong followers of Jesus as we once were. Now, very, very concerning statistics show that this is crazy, folks. Only 12% of children's pastors and youth pastors have a biblical worldview. I don't know if that bothers you. It bothers me. Um, Lifeway Resources, Christian Resources, found only 29% 
of born again Christians state that their personal faith plays a significant role in their approach to parenting and that the church and the Bible rank low on the list of where they go looking for parenting advice. And the big picture is there's very few churches that are actually helping parents navigate what Christian parenting should look like. That's a problem, people. Expert tells us we have basically from birth to 12 years of age to impact our children with foundational beliefs in God and the Bible. After that, their peers, education, media, and internet and culture will be their strongest influence. If they're not grounded in their faith in God's word before they reach their teenage years, it will likely be very difficult to, uh, for them to stand for Christ as young adults. The bottom line is, we can no longer raise our children the way we were raised because the world we were raised in no longer exists. We have to completely rethink children's and youth ministries if we're to transform today's younger generations into steadfast followers of Christ. And those are the areas that need prayer. So how do we help our Christian parents raise their children to become passionate followers in a culture that's increasingly antagonistic to our faith? By the time uh, the majority, you, here's thank the, you. Yeah. Uh, let's just go right into prayer. Please ask three of your friends to pray because we do need to keep our schedule. So let's do that. And then you can okay. share more about children during the next 30 minutes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ray Baldwin, 50 year veteran, children's pastor. You know this as well as I do. Go for it, brother. Father God, we just come before you. Our hearts ache for the children that have come through our churches and have left. Father, we pray that you'd wake up our church, wake up our children's ministries, wake up those who, who are working with children, Father. Give them a new vision. Give them a vision that works. Help them to reach, teach, mentor, and train each child with a biblical worldview so that they have a good grasp and a handle on what's happening around them. Father, we just ask your forgiveness, first of all, for all of the things that we have missed. Father, we just pray our hearts will be open to your guidance. Pour out your spirit upon each one of us so that we can lead our children into your presence and into the future of this church. Father, we ask your, that you touch each one of us. Watch over us and help us as we strive to teach, train, and mentor our children. In Jesus' name. Uh, Becky, you're muted. Pat Holland, would you please pray next? Father, I pray for children that don't know you. Father, I pray for children that have believed the lies of hell. Father, there's so many different kinds of lies from the pits of hell that our children are believing. And because of those lies, they don't know how wonderful Jesus is. So Father, I pray in the precious name of Jesus that you, you said that when he has come, he will convict and convince the world of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. So I pray, Father, in the precious name of Jesus that you would draw children to you, that we would be bold to proclaim the gospel and to lift you up because you said if we lift you up you would draw all men to us got to you father so I pray father that your name would be lifted I pray that children will come to know you that there will be great revival in children's lives today in the name of Jesus amen amen Barbie Hunt founder of Healing Rooms Kids would you please pray Thank you, God, that you, your heart is turned toward kids. Your heart. We're praying your heart. We ask your heart to be turned toward these children, that they will want you, that their hearts will turn toward you. We ask for you to move in their lives. We ask you to speak to them in the night. We ask you to turn um, groups of kids into little prayer teams, that you would create a desire and a hunger for you that doesn't make sense to the church. And I agree with Becky. We're going out 
after. We're coaching to the top. We're asking you to reach kids that are in the body of Christ that have not yet heard who they are. And we ask you to release them into leadership now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. You know, we all know the effect of the media on our children as well as adults. So uh, we have a missionary to Hollywood, Ophelia, connecting with us from Southern California. Ophelia, would you lead us uh, in prayer for transformation of both the entertainment and news media? Lead us. Yes, thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your hand in Hollywood, God. We thank you for your original intent and design, design. when you created Hollywood and the um, entertainment industry, Jesus. And so, Father, we are reclaiming, Lord, your plans, God, and your intentions for the influence of Hollywood and the news media, Lord. God, we thank you. We start with thanking you and praising you, Jesus, for the answers to, to decades of prayer, of your prayer warriors that have interceded faithfully for Hollywood and the news media. God, we thank you for the answers and that you are a God who does hear our prayer and that you answer Jesus. So as we come together in agreement for your will, for your will to be done in Hollywood and the news media, God, we thank you that it is answered. It will be done. Father, we pray, Jesus, together in unity, Father, that your love, God, the love of the Father, the spirit of adoption, Lord, would infiltrate Hollywood, Lord. That you would, we, we bind, God, the spirit of the orphan spirit that is rampant in this industry, Jesus. And Lord, we release your love, God. Father, we ask that you would send labors into um, this field, Lord, and that we would see a great harvest we pray with expectancy, Father, for a harvest, God. Even when we don't see the rain, Jesus, we wait expectantly and look for the rain clouds, Father. The rain clouds of revival in Hollywood and the news media, Jesus. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the, the ones that have been missionaries in Hollywood and the news media, God. We praise you. We ask that you would strengthen them, that you would refresh them, Lord, that you would renew their vision, Lord and that you would help them to see the ways that you have answered. But we do, God, pray for more, Lord. We pray for more people that you would raise up to send in to Hollywood and the news media that are skilled at their craft, Father, and they are walking in the fullness and the power and the boldness of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we bind the, the powers and principalities, Jesus. We enter the courtrooms of heaven now through the blood of Jesus. And we bind the principalities and powers, Lord, that have established themselves and seated themselves, Lord, in high places. We cast them down in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we ask Amen. that you would send, yes, Lord, send your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, before I ask Bill Ballard in Michigan and Dennis Crane in Was Washington State to pray, uh, just a quick announcement. For those of you just joined us, uh, uh, please go to projectpray.org and then click the link uh, that says 21 Days of Prayer and uh, stay connected with us throughout these 21 days. And also, if anyone watching either the live or the recorded version, we want to we provide you with uh, opportunity to receive prayer and ministry over the phone. Okay? So... <clears throat> A uh, couple of numbers, uh, area code 855-514-HOPE, or you could dial 877-800-PRAY. Uh, seven, seven, so if you call either number, there'll be someone waiting for you to listen to your prayer needs, and uh, there'll be someone who will be happy to pray for you, okay? Well, one more time, 855-514-HOPE. Or 877-800-PRAY. So um, yesterday, there was a great annual gathering called Together for Ending Human Trafficking. And many across the nation joined on telephone. And we prayed for the ending of human trafficking in America and beyond. So and, and uh, one of those intercessors that prayed yesterday is Bill Ballard in Michigan. Bill Ballard. Uh, would you unmute, please? And uh, would you lead us in a prayer for, it, for the end of human trafficking here in America? Yes, I will. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we are crying out and praying to you, dear Lord, for our nation and the world to eliminate human trafficking. We know human trafficking towards slavery, forced sexual acts, and any other form of control over another person or child without their consent is outright barbaric and unconscionable. We realize that these actions are an abomination in your sight. So we are praying, is, our prayer is for you, dear Lord, to help us fallen beings back to you, Lord, and help us all to be overcomers of this evil darkness and move into your light and salvation for our lives and follow you in forgiveness and your goodness and grace forever. Thank you, dear Lord. Amen. 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 Becky, I would like to ask you to choose one of the sisters who have yet to pray, one of your friends, to pray for the men of America. Vast majority of Christian men have intentionally visited a porn site on the internet. And this also includes pastors. Yes. If yes. Christian men stopped uh, visiting porn sites, it'll, it'll, it'll put many of the traffickers out of business. And, and more, of the, more and more of these images are of younger and younger people. So Becky, would you ask one of your friends to pray for the men across America right now? Yes, Sandra Meyer, would you please pray? Oh my goodness, oh Lord, Father. Oh my goodness, Father, Father, Father. We come before you, Lord. What a heartbreaking uh, truth that we're coming to you with tonight. Father God, our men and even our boys, they have access to all this filth, Lord. We want it all to end. We want it to be cut off, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We want our fathers, our men, our uncles, our grandfathers, their hearts, Lord. It longs for truth, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You have put that longing within them, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Father, that they will turn to you. You are the way, the truth, and the life, Lord. We pray, Father God, that the blinders will come off their eyes, the hard-heartedness that the enemy has caused by feeding them this filth in the name of Jesus. They're not thinking about daughters. They're not thinking about sons. They're thinking about themselves and their lust. Lord, we pray that those blinders will be lifted off of their eyes, the hardness off of their hearts, and we call them to righteousness, Lord. We call them to salvation, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the all-powerful, all-loving, all-caring, all-giving one. We thank you, Father, for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. In the name amen. Jesus. amen, amen. And Father, uh, uh, the brother who was supposed to present next uh, is unable to join us because he, he is attending to his wife for his mother-in-law has passed away. Thank you, Lord, that this precious woman is now with you. But would you bring comfort uh, to this daughter of yours and uh, and as well as our brother who cannot join us to speak and that you would you would just comfort the entire family father in jesus name amen uh so we're gonna have another round of prayer for different cities and states so for those of you who have connected by zoom uh if you have a burden for a particular city or a state maybe you live there or maybe you once lived there or maybe you have never been there, but God is giving you a burden. Would you just unmute and just take a minute and pray for spiritual awakening in that city or that state? Okay? So we're going to have a little bit of uh, uh, open time or prayer for anyone that would like to pray. That's on Zoom right now. Okay, I'm going to jump in now. Okay. <laughs> I'll give it to you. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm from the Flint, Michigan area, and Flint, Michigan, dear Lord, has been pretty hard hit. Uh, it's the home of General Motors, but dear Lord, they pulled out, and and the void that's left in our in our town has just been just devastating. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we have churches. We have churches three or four within a mile of each other. And dear Lord, all of them are just struggling to stay open. And yet they will not give up. They will not give, give in to coming together as the, the body of Christ as one. Instead, they want to keep and stay in their church. And, and dear Heavenly Father, we know that it's you that can help us see that you are the great I am. You're the one that we're supposed to be following. We are one body of Christ. And we pray that you allow that to happen in our town in Flint, Michigan. Thank you, dear Lord. Amen. We had um, an awakening in Kentucky last year, many of you know about, and I just want to pray and thank God that he is moving among colleges and universities across the country. Yes. I thank you, God, that it is not stopped, that it is not slowing down, that there is a heart turned toward you of our young adults. And so we ask you, Lord, to continue to move among uh, what started at Asbury and people saw and experienced real worship true hearts to you god we ask you to move across our country and do it again everywhere in every state at every university among every uh group of people in um in our university settings in jesus name Amen. Father, I'm going to pray for the Dallas-Fort Worth area here in Texas. Father, this is an area where we have many, many mega churches. There's so many so-called believers, but Father, there's a religious spirit. And Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit, Father, would wash over the church, Lord God, in this area. And Father, I pray that that would happen across the Bible Belt in the name of Jesus. That Father, all across the South, Father, and other areas where there have been many major moves of God in the past. Lord, we pray that you would refresh us again. Father God, cause our hearts to leap toward you. That it, church isn't something we do, but ecclesia is who we are. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Revive us again. Lord, I come before you on half of Washington, D.C., Lord, the seat of power. And Lord, that's power. It's greed. It's sexuality, Lord. And Lord, these come against you, Lord. And so, Lord, we pray for the residents of Washington, D.C. and the surrounding area. May the Holy Spirit touch them in powerful ways, Lord. Give them what is right and give them what is wrong, Lord. And so we just pray your revival would flow out of Washington, D.C., just as church has been in the in the state capital, in the, in the U.S. capital in the past. May it come and do even more, Lord. So we pray for our leaders, Lord, the state rep representatives, the, the senators, the president, and all his staff. May they come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and walk in the fullness thereof. Hear our prayer. Amen. Father, I want to lift up Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I want to thank you for the ministry of Brad and Charlotte Gillespie of Pray.TV there. And, and Lord, it's a hub for the intellectual centers of our country, Harvard, MIT, and so many universities there, Lord. We just pray for all of the, um, the, the young people there, Father, that you would touch their hearts and you would draw them to you, help them to know the true reality of life in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We have time for maybe one more. So who would like to step up? I would like to pray for my state of Utah, formerly from Louisiana. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I look around and see the beautiful edifices made to uh, for the Mormon church, Lord. These beautiful edifices and um, this Mormon uh, faith that has uh, huge, huge amounts of wealth. Lord, I ask you to flip these people out of this church and out of this false teaching and into the real Jesus Christ. Their name is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but their book is the Book of Mormon. And this is the book that they believe oh, priests overcomes the Bible. It, it's bigger than the Bible, better than the Bible, they say. So, Father, we pray for their hearts to be turned, Lord. They are precious, precious serving people. So we pray for you to release them from this false teaching in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. I would like everyone to join me on Zoom. 
uh, and reach out your right hand of blessing towards Becky. I'm going to pray for her, and she's going to uh, give a, I believe, the Father's message for all of us to listen and be inspired by. Father, I want to thank you for Becky. Thank you, Lord, that for decades uh, you have used her to bless countless number of children. And through many that she has trained in many countries around the world, Lord, the number could be in the millions. So we thank you, Lord, because she has she said yes to you when she was a child. And she is helping children, Lord, enter into ministry at a young age. We thank you for the for the ministry of kids in ministry international. Lord, I pray that you would speak your words and everyone that's listening, either live or recording, would be inspired to also uh, lead our children into ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. Becky, take it away. All right. All of the things that I mentioned earlier are the things that have really uh, just uh, caused me to just uh, go in the direction that we had. And, and I'm going to try to share 30 years of experience in three minutes. How about that? Uh, but one of the, the, the primary things that we have learned is that kids today don't just want to sit and listen to us talk. They want to be involved in the things that God is doing around the world. And that is part of the problem where we've been losing our kids is we have not taken them seriously as disciples of Christ. And so in our ministry, it took years for this to happen um, at, over a period of time. But we began to realize that the three things that were missing the most in our children's ministries and we're discovering in our youth ministries too, that we call them our core values. And that was teaching kids the meat of the word, uh, giving kids, uh, equipping them for the work of the ministry, and also bringing them into the presence of God. And when you begin to couple those things and we break those down and teach them, uh, one of the things I think we can all admit is that we've had this mindset that the only thing that kids could understand intellectually was Bible stories. And so we've just focused on that. But the truth is, and there's many people on this call with me tonight can verify in their own ministries that children are capable of doing amazing things. Children can heal the sick. In our ministry, it's not just me. I have leaders all over the world, um, and, and they have all been using these same principles and our materials and all. And we have just dozens and dozens of testimonies of miraculous healings. We have testimonies of kids hearing God's voice, being led by the Spirit. They'll go out and, they'll, and, and the Holy Spirit will tell them, this person over here is a witch, and sure enough, they're casting spells and throwing uh, icons in the river and all, and they uh, talk to them and get them saved. Uh, we've got kids who seriously have cast out devils, and we've even got three testimonies in our ministry where children have prayed for dead people and they've come back to life. Children can do anything that adults can do if we just teach on their level and give them a platform and teach them what to do, equip them with the body. Where It's very important. That we, you can't teach kids the word without equipping. You can't equip kids without teaching them the word. But both of those things come together when you do those things, then you bring them into the presence of God. And we discovered in our ministry a long time ago, if we don't give kids the presence of God, that we've given them head knowledge with no heart knowledge. We've given them a religion with no relationship. And, and the, the presence of God is not just the icing on the cake. The presence of God is the cake. And so you have to have those three ingredients. And whenever we would do kids ministry or family conferences in the United States, around the world, teenagers would want to come. And I'd say, well, why do you want to come to a kids conference? And they said, because you're teaching kids things that nobody's teaching us. What are we teaching them? We're teaching them how to hear God's voice. We're teaching them how to be led by the Spirit. We're teaching them how to operate in the nine gifts of the Spirit. We're teaching them how to, um, to preach the gospel and, and all the rest. And so it's all of these things. This is the heart of what we do in our ministry. And... Um, and this is what has got to change in the body of Christ. I referred to it either, either earlier that we're just still operating out of an old wineskin. We've got to understand what the new wineskin is. If we're going to capture the heart of this new generation, then we have got to change the methodology 
that we're using in our churches today. Parents have to understand their role. We need to help them and equip them and give them resources so they know what to do. About all we do for the parents is we spit out a few uh, 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 you know, well-known scriptures like spare the rod, spoil the child, um, Jesus loves the little children, train up a child in the way he should go, but we never tell them, we never tell them what it means to train up a child. We just tell them they're supposed to do it. What does that mean? What does that look like? These are all things that we need to do. So that's what we're doing in our ministry. And this is the type of thing that needs to spread around the world. Not just one church, not just one denomination, but this is for the body of Christ. No matter what denominational background you come from, whether you come from strictly evangelical, whether you come from Pentecost or whatever, you need to understand that those three core values work in whatever um, or a denominational element that you're in. The kids need the meat of the word. They need to understand what the word of God says. And they can understand anything that you can teach an adult on their level. And they're hungry to find out. We need to equip them to do the work of the ministry. That means different things to different people. But it means that we need to get our kids activated in the body of Christ. The world is not taking uh, any backseat. They are aggressively teaching our kids to be activists in every area of ungodliness and sinfulness. And the church is still just handing out animal crackers and, and apple juice and calling it good. You know, we've got to do something different. That's the prayer of my heart. Um, I could talk for hours on the miracles that have happened in our ministry, not through the adults, but through the children who have now grown up and now they're teenagers. And now our leaders are training them to go out and they're starting ministry. We've got some that have gone out and started churches and they're evangelizing. We're raising up from one from elementary to teenagers, and now we're teaching them to go out and, and, and preach the gospel and be active members in the body of Christ. No more of this stuff is sitting around until you're 18 years old, and then we'll maybe take you seriously as a soldier in the body of Christ. We need to do it when they're starting out. From the time they're preschoolers, we need to teach them to hear God's voice, get them saved, get them filled with the Holy Spirit, teach them how to be led by the Spirit, how to heal the sick and all the rest of it. That's what we need to do. That's what's going to change. That's what's going to keep them in the church. There's no, no magic bullet that's going to keep 100% of our kids in the church. But the point is, we're losing them now. We've got to do something different. We've got to change our methodology in the church. So are you ready to pray? Uh, Becky, thank you so much. I think that uh, everyone should visit kidsinministry.org and learn more about what Becky's doing. Uh, I I uh, dropped the ball uh, a few minutes ago, and I forgot to ask Mary L. Bowman, Director of Pray California, can I ask her to pray for this radical shift in the mindset of the Church of California? Because we need to have, imagine if every kid in California saw himself, herself, as a, minister, as a minister of the gospel. So, Maria, would you unmute and pray? And then, Becky, you could ask uh, multiple friends of yours to pray. Maria Bowman, would you unmute, please? Okay, well, let's, uh, let's uh, go back to your friends, and maybe Maria will unmute a little later and pray. Okay, that sounds great. Jan McEachern, would you please pray? Lord, we just pray for your church. Awaken your leaders. Awaken your pa the parents. Awaken the pastors. Awaken people to realize that they're losing their children because they as assume they're going to grow in their faith through osmosis. Lord, that's not going to happen. They're going to have to get very intentional, and they're going to have to be very uh, purposeful in this so that these children will know that they know what it means to be born again. They know what it means to be led by the spirit they know these things and then they teach them by using them with them to model this ministry and they take them with them and they they don't exclude them from the prayer meetings and they don't exclude them from seeking god and they don't exclude them from ministry but they're going to make them their partners we pray it'll dawn on your people in this last day that this chill this children's army is waiting to be activated amen Amen. Pamela Ayers, would you please pray? Forgive us, Lord. 
as many years as the word has gone through, we still see you as the one who parts the waters. I pray in the name of Jesus for senior pastors all over the United States of America to have an awakening that cannot be taken away from them, an absolute recognition that they are pastoring not only one generation, but every generation in their church, and that they are responsible for the fruit that remains. We bless them. We thank you for the shepherds. And we say yes and amen to your dealing to part the waters of whatever is blocking them from releasing ministry to children with effective vision. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Christopher Summerfield, would you please pray? Uh, Lord, we just thank you so much for the children in this country. And Lord, we just ask that your spirit of revival would sweep across this nation in children's ministry, Lord. Let the next wave of revival not come from the pulpit. Let it not come from the college, but let it come from the children. That children are going to be the ones who are leading people to you in the coming days. And we just command the host of heaven to go out into the churches across this nation and prepare the next uh, prophets, the next preachers, Lord, Father, that these children will prophesy, they will heal the sick. And we just command these things in Jesus' name, and we thank you for everything that you are doing in this nation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Angela Marks, children's pastor, would you please pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we ask that you would remove every limitation and every old mindset that has been placed on children of God. And we ask right now that you will release them into the atmosphere, release them into the world, God, release them into the nations, that they will be intercessors, that they will be prophetic warriors, oh God, that they will walk in the nine gifts of the spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we pray right now, oh God, that they will be the answer to many questions and problems in this world. We pray right now oh god that their voice will be loud like a like a trumpet sounding out your word oh god and declaring your word in jesus name we pray right now that they will cry loud and spare not when it comes to the things that their generation has been ran havoc over god we ask right now oh god in the name of jesus that they will be the spiritual and kingdom content creators that will create media that will create animations that will create those things needed for their generation and let it be kingdom in the mighty name of jesus that they will be able to be representations and model of you, ambassadors of you for their peers, for their parents, and for their community in Jesus' name. God, we thank you right now that you have ripped off every limitation upon them and you have released them into the world for such is the kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, Mary Ellen was able to unmute. So let's have her go next and then two others, uh, friends, friends of yours. Mary Ellen, would you pray for a radical shift in the way the Church of California does business. We need to have every child be a ministry of the gospel in California. Amen, amen. Father God, as your watchmen, we blow the shofars in the spirit and we passionately call your sons and daughters to awaken and arise. We are called to bless and possess this land and we step into that assignment with zeal and with holy hands since you call us to be holy as you are holy. We have failed to be an example to the young ones. God, forgive us for compromising your word. Oh God, please forgive us. We know you say that unless the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchmen stay awake in vain. Please lead and direct us how to build with Yeshua as a cornerstone and prayer as a foundation. Lord God, you are the light of the world. You give hope to the hopeless. You are Prince of Peace and you give strength to the weary. Your precious blood gives life to those facing suicide as so many young ones are doing these days. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We cry out for fresh fire to hit the hearts and souls of the children and the pastors and leaders will recognize the different spiritual gifts and physical talents of every child every youth disciple them and engage them so they become involved that they will become bold and courageous 
and reach out to other children, other youth, to become this army on fire for you and for your kingdom purposes. We thank you, our caring, compassionate, good, good Father, full of mercy, love, and forgiveness. We thank you for your presence and for touching each precious one made in your image into their calling. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yes, Don Kiever, would you please pray? Lord God, we just declare a Josiah awakening in the children, a Josiah awakening in the children. Oh, kids, come alive. Come alive in the spirit. Call out and cry out to your father to know him, your father in heaven, Jesus Christ. They want to know who you are. They need to know who you are. Come on, kids, walk into this Josiah awakening and anointing. Let it be much more than just a, a remodel job on the church building. Let it be so much more, but a, a discovery of what the word of God says and what you're not doing, what you're not obeying him in. Come on, wake up. Wake up, kids. Cry out for it. Cry out for it. Even if adults don't catch on to it, you can hear the Spirit calling you. You can hear the Holy Spirit of fire moving your spirit. Come in. Come in, Josiahs. Wake up and change a nation in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Frank Nichols, would you please pray? Lord, I lift up the children in our, in our lives, those with whom we live and minister to. I pray that we would learn to love them, Lord, as you love them. I pray our hearts would be to bless them as your heart was. <clears throat> I pray that we would see them as you see them, as people worthy of your time and attention. Help us to remember what a privilege it is to serve children. <clears throat> I'm reminded of the wonderful quote from Charles Dickens. It is no small thing when they, who are so fresh from God, love us. Amen, amen. Becky, it's been so wonderful to uh, not only hear from you, but agree in prayer with your friends and uh, so let's let's just continue to stay uh, on for another thirty minutes. And uh, remember, let's go back to nineteen seventy three. Do you remember uh, what you were doing in nineteen seventy three? In nineteen seventy three, I was an eleven year old kid in New York City. My family and I just immigrated from Seoul, Korea, three years before, and uh, I didn't realize. That in my hometown, Seoul, Korea, Billy Graham had his largest gathering of people in his entire ministry. Three million Koreans gathered. Now, some of those people were, they came over and over again. So these are three million bodies showed up. Okay? So I cannot say three million different people. And uh, so last year was the 50th anniversary. And uh, something great is happening in our nation. Two years ago, last year, and, and also this year, Korean intercessors have made great impact the last two years, and they're going to return again to America this year. Uh, that's how much other nations view the importance of spiritual awakening in America. So I have the great privilege of introducing to you uh, Pastor Willie really Rash. Uh, I know he doesn't look Korean, but he's a Korean at heart. And he's a senior pastor of Centerview Baptist Church in Kannapolis, North Carolina. Last year, they hosted a group of Korean intercessors. I guess, I guess it was okay because he's inviting Korean intercessors again this year in the month of May. So, uh, Pastor, Pastor Willie, really, would you unmute, please? And, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, you know what? Let's all extend the right hand of blessing towards Pastor Willie. Uh, so, Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, for Pastor Willie. His heart is for you, the body of Christ, and he is so desperate to see spiritual awakening in North Carolina as well as rest of our country. Lord, we want to hear the good news of what happened last year, and we also want to hear the opportunity for us to pray 
with Korean intercessors this year. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Willie, yeah. please share with us what happened last year. Amen. Well, it's an honor and blessing to be on a prayer call with our brothers and sisters all over the nation. So thank you for praying for revival and spiritual awakening. Um, my connection's kind of going in and out. Can you still hear me? Yes, we're okay. Can you hear me okay? All right, good. Um, I want to read first Psalm 85, if I could, portion of it. It says, Restore us again, O God, our Savior, and put away your displeasure towards us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what God the Lord will say. He promises peace to his people, his saints, but let them not return to folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. And so that's, uh, you know, the call of revival, God, for him to revive us again and for us not to return to folly. And uh, let me just give you a brief background of Kannapolis um, and a description. We're, Kannapolis is just north of Charlotte, up uh, Interstate 85. Our two counties are connected, Mecklenburg County and uh, Cabarrus County. We're home to uh, what used to be uh, Cannon Mills. It was the largest manufacturer of towels and sheets in the world back in the early 1900s. Uh, maybe some of you older folks have bought Cannon sheets and towels. They were very good. Um, the mill was opened by the Cannon family, like I said, in the early 1900s. He was a very benevolent man. He gave land to uh, churches all across the city, different denominations, different groups to build their buildings. Uh, First Baptist Church was one of those. It was right next to the mill. Our church as well was uh, given land to build on 90 years ago, 90 plus years ago now. And um, he's helped, uh, has helped in the past with building libraries and hospitals and senior centers and all kinds of stuff in different places across North Carolina. So he's a very, very benevolent man. But like many other manufacturing companies in the U.S., um, after a couple different owners, hard times came uh, to the mill and it closed for good in 2003. It was the largest uh, one day closing in North Carolina history. It was over 4,000 people lost their jobs overnight. Back in the early, uh, or the middle of the 1900s, they, uh, hired as many as 20,000 people in their various plants. So um, a number of pastors met in the city regularly before the closing to pray for the mill, to pray for the workers, to uh, to pray for the, um, for the city, for the future of the city. And uh, once it closed, those buildings, um, many large buildings, over, over a thousand acres of land, just was uh, empty, like a lot of places across the country. Uh, that had manufacturing, but uh, David Murdoch came and bought all of that. He's the owner of Dole Pineapple, and everything was torn down. All kinds of square feet of, of buildings, he tore it, absolutely every bit of it down, took the bricks and sold them someplace else. But uh, a top-notch uh, science research center was built in its place, uh, Dr. Murdoch or Mr. Murdoch's wife had died uh, fairly young and he wanted to find a cure for cancer. And so being a billionaire and, and he put his money in and got public money as well to, to build this uh, research center. There's over eight universities across the state that participate in this. And so the city's been transitioning from a mill town to a research center ever since. And uh, the city's been growing very quickly. Uh, we're approaching 60,000 people uh, in population, again, right outside of Charlotte. A lot of the Charlotte is expanding our way. Uh, Cabarrus County, which includes our sister city of Concord, has um, nearly 250,000 people. And so um, Kannapolis is also known not only for Cannon Mills, but also as the birthplace for all you NASCAR fans of uh, Dale Earnhardt. So uh, I don't know if any of you are race car fans or not, but Dale Earnhardt was born here and the Charlotte Motor Speedway is just about 10 miles or so 
from Kannapolis. It's a beautiful city um, in the downtown area, which is right next to the research center in 2015. It was totally overhauled and revitalized and it was now focuses mostly on health and entertainment. It's a good place to raise a family. Um, lots of uh, free family friendly events. And so um, the city is very open as well to partnering with the churches and helping its citizens. I think Mr. Cannon probably laid that foundation early as well. So when the Korean prayer team came to town last year, they prayed at the National Day of Prayer. Uh, they prayed with the mayor as well, which was very encouraging to him. Prayed with the, one of the city councilmen and various other people while they were there during the week. But we also participated in a rooftop prayer time from the balcony of, of City Hall that overlooks the city using the materials from John Whaley. You may know him. He's maybe on here tonight somewhere as well. But after the team looked over the city quietly for a period of time and prayed, um, they talked about what they sensed from God. And then three of them, through an interpreter, um, told us what God, they had sensed God telling them. And, and all three of them said, uh, it's a beautiful city. But one of them then followed up by saying, it's full of idolatry. And another one said that underneath this beautiful city is both physical and spiritual poverty. And then uh, with the influx of the new people that are uh, moving into our city, it's uh, caused problems for our older population and the poorer population are getting and, uh, priced out with the rent going sky high and expenses. So that's been a problem. And then the, uh, uh, the other prayer warrior said that there's many churches in the city, but they're spiritually dry and in need of and um, the pastors, you know, that were involved with bringing them here, you know, believe they clearly heard that from the Lord. And the economic advances are outpacing the spiritual advancements for sure. And Jeremiah 2.13s for uh, digging cisterns that can't hold water. And so, um, so we need to pray uh, for our city for revival and awakening here. You know, we're in the Bible Belt, but, um, but we still we still need God for sure. So I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to ask Steve Davis. He is the, uh, he's the pastor at River Rock Church at Odell in Concord. He's also our director of missions in our Cabarrus Baptist Association. He, uh, he's going to share just a little bit about how the, the team impacted uh, the city and the churches in a great way. And, and then I'm going to ask him to pray as well. And then Tracy Call will share after that. Uh, I know personally for my own church, um, the Korean teams there, our, our church had just flooded uh, about uh, four, five months before uh, we had a broken water pipe. And as they prayed in our church, uh, they uh, said that uh, God I was telling them that uh, just as Jesus turned the water into wine, he was going to turn the water that flooded our a sanctuary into a flood of blessings and we are, are experiencing that right now as a church as as God is uh, uh, just blessing our church and we're seeing uh, growth and and a desire uh, among our people to to pray it's changed our prayer life at our church it's changed the prayer life of several of our churches in our community and and we're praying as they come again that uh, it's going to cause us to uh, just to have our hearts broken uh, again. Um, it, it breaks our heart that, that people are coming 2,000 miles, have a greater burden for our country than we do. And uh, so we're praying that God is going to pour out a great revival uh, on our community that will just spread, uh, whether, as uh, somebody said earlier, uh, if it starts somewhere and spreads to us, we'll praise the Lord. Uh, but if it uh, starts here and spreads elsewhere, we'll praise the Lord. So, uh, Willie, did you say you wanted me to pray, or did you want to go ahead and let Tracy share? Now go ahead and pray, and, and then Tracy will pray, and then I'll, and I'll pray. Tracy, you can share whatever you'd like as well. Well, Father, 
Lord, there is a, a, a spiritual dryness in our churches. Lord, we, we've learned to trust in our resources. We've learned to trust in our finances. We've learned to trust in our buildings. And we've forgotten to trust you. And God, we're asking, we're begging, Lord, that you would just pour out your spirit on our churches. Lord, that you would break us of our trust in other things and, and, and break us, Lord, of our sins and break us, Lord, of our own idolatry, even in the churches. Lord, it's not the community, Lord, that sets up idols alone. Lord, it's your church that sets up idols. Lord, we've set up idols of budgets and buildings, Lord, and we've said we're going to trust them to, to, to draw people, but Lord, it's only you. And so, Lord, we're praying as the, the for the Korean team that will come that, Lord, that they will not just be praying for us, but they will lead us to pray. And, Lord, that you would just use them, Lord, to, to uh, ignite a, a prayer revival, Lord, among your churches, Lord, that we will seek you and call out to you. And we will not let that, Lord, we will not let go of you, Lord, until you have blessed us. Lord, we just ask that you would do this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Tracy is pastor at New Piney Grove Baptist Church, and I'm um, going to ask him to pray for our city leaders and uh, people that are in need as well. We talked about the physical and the spiritual poverty as well, and, um, and pray for awakening. Also, pray for the other host cities, Tracy, if you would, as well, if you could unmute and pray and, and share you know, what how God touched your heart as well, if you'd like. Yes, sir. Uh the uh, experience we had uh, last year with the team was one of the uh, most profound experiences that I have experienced in my 43 years of ministry. Uh, we are uh, still seeing a lot of the fruit uh, from that team uh, through the uh, intercessory prayers that they brought forth uh, in our city. Uh, there's still uh, a lot of a lot of unity amongst uh, the uh, the churches in our area. Uh, one thing that really stuck out with me, uh, I took them to my uh, alma mater, a uh, Barbara Scotia College. It's a, a historical black college. Uh, they uh been closed, really, uh, for the last 15 years. And I took that team uh, down. Uh, we stood in the center of the campus down there, and they prayed, uh, intercede, interceded for uh, the college. And uh, God has started uh, to do a great work, uh, bringing that college back alive, uh, sending a man of God there that had, that that the, the college was founded uh, by the Presbyterian Church uh, in the 1800s. And uh, uh, he uh, uh, have vision, have faith that God is gonna uh, gonna bring uh, that college back up with such a great influence uh, to the community there in the Concord area. Uh, let's pray, Father. We thank you and we praise you just for your mercies, your kindness, your favor that endures throughout all generations. We thank you for your love. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing. Uh, we know God and realize that it's only by you. And God, we need you more right now than we ever needed you before uh, in our lives. We thank you for our city, uh, Kannapolis, North Carolina. Thank you for all the cities and the states and our nation that's represented on this line on the day. The same thing, oh God, we need in our cities, in our city, is needed throughout our nation. Not only our nation, oh God, but across the world. We pray, God, that you just bless uh, our leaders. God, we thank you for the leaders that we have in our city. We have some good leaders, oh God, Christian men and women, oh God, that's not uh, uh, ashamed of the gospel of Christ and allows uh, uh, pastors and churches, oh God, to share their vision with them as we work together, oh God, to, uh, to be a benefit to those uh, in our community. God, uh, we pray 
and ask that you will forgive us for our sins. Oh God, help us to seek the kingdom of God and all its righteousness. And God, you said that all these things would be added unto to us, oh God. We thank you for the team that you're going to send back this way. And God, I thank you, oh God, that the prayers of the righteous, they availeth much. You know, God, the prayers that is being prayed across our nation even right now, you have a way of hearing them all, oh God, and just discipling them all and answering the needs of them all. So we thank you, oh God, that you're a sovereign God and you have all power in your hands. And God, we want you to know that we love you. We adore you. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm, I'm going to pray here in just a second. And, and we've had each night um, when everybody has prayed together that we can, uh, if that's okay to do tonight, um, have everyone pray together for, for revival for these teams that are coming and for the preparation in, in, uh, in our own country for uh, for revival and awakening so let let me pray and if it's possible um y'all can pray together as well father we thank you that you love us and and lord you you know all things you are sovereign and you are god lord there's nothing that's going on in this world that you're not aware of lord it looks chaotic and crazy to us at times but father we know you're in charge lord that you have a plan father that plan will come to fruition and Father, in your word, it tells you that you don't want any to perish, but all to come to repentance. And so, God, we need you. Father, we cry out for you. Lord, we need revival and awakening, Lord, in our hearts and in our lives. Lord, you start with the with the church. Father, you tell us that judgment begins with the house of God. And so, Lord, we pray that, Lord, you will change our hearts. Lord, that our hearts would be on fire for you. Lord, you tell us to love you with all of our heart and soul and mind and strength. And Lord, we'd like to say sometimes we love you most of, with most of our heart most of the time. But oh God, you tell us to love you with all that we are. And so Lord, forgive us. We break that greatest commandment probably more than anything else. Father, forgive us for, for the idols that we place in our lives, Lord, for following after all the distractions that are put before us. But oh God, may our hearts seek after you. Lord, you tell us that we seek you with all of our heart that you will be found. And Lord, you tell us to ask and to seek and to knock. And Lord, we do that tonight. And Father, we thank you for these prayers that are going up all across our country even now. Father, thank you for what you're doing from Maine to California and from Washington to Florida and all the places in between, Texas to Wisconsin. And, and Lord, just we know that you're at work. Lord, you wouldn't be stirring your people to pray, as, as was mentioned earlier, Father, if you weren't going to do something. And so, Father, thank you. Lord, forgive us for being so slow to respond. But, Father, we thank you for your patience and your mercy. We cry out for that, Lord. And we pray, Father, that we will uh, have a heart that, that longs for you. And so, Lord, thank you for what you're doing. And, Lord, we just trust you to continue to work. And it's already been said, Father, wherever you want to start it, Lord, you've, you've been uh, working in places already. So, Father, may it continue to sweep across our nation, Father, for your glory and honor that multiple millions of people will come into your kingdom. Lord, that's your desire, and you tell us to pray according to your will. So, Lord, we do that even now. And so we thank you and we pray. Let's all a pray. Amen. To you, so so, pray so to before, uh, in a moment, I'm going to ask everyone on the Zoom to unmute. And if there's a way to unmute the folks who have called in through the telephone, uh, let's let's. Let's be reminded, 2 Chronicles 7.14 starts off with, if my people who are called by my name, we got to take responsibility over our sins and the sins of the church before we can start letting the sinners know that they need Jesus too, right? And then, behold, I knock at your door. That was to the church of Laodicea. And I'm thinking in many ways we have become like church of Laodicea in America. Amen. But the revival in America is critical for global evangelization because America consists of all the nations, right? All the nations have converged to make these United States. And I'm going to call it the, I'm going to call ourselves United States of Jesus Christ. Amen. So right yeah. now, let's everybody on the Zoom unmute. And uh, on the phone, if, if there's a way to unmute everyone's line, let's just take a minute and desperately cry out to the Lord. 
to forgive our sins and for us to enter and, and for his him to release the, a great awakening in our lands. So let's all pray together. So, Father, we thank you. Lord. We are desperate to be part of the awakening. And say, because we're gonna devote ourselves to this song okay you mm -hmm. are going to go. overthrow you know, those things that are be. standing in your way for your amen, children. Amen, amen. Jesus okay, name. so I'm going to read the first verse of this very familiar song. We're going to change the lyrics from I to we and my to our. Okay? So stay unmuted. We're going to sing together. Lord, we come. We confess. Bowing we here. Come. We find our rest. Without you, we fall apart. You're the one that guides our heart. Let's sing this prayer together. Lord, we need you. Oh, we need you. Every hour we need you. Our one defense, our righteousness. Oh, God, we need you. Oh, God, how we need you. You know, Pastor Willie, really, you're right on when you said, that we are so self-sufficient. We think, you know, although one of our presidents messed up the health care, but I still got my health insurance. <laughs> I get to drive a newer car. I'm going from a two-car garage to a three-car garage because I got so much junk in my house. <laughs> right? Yeah, I can hear you. And, 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 especially the men, between the most productive years of our lives, between 25 and 65, we're squandering mm. the opportunities for the men to be servant leaders, for the men to love our wives as Christ loves his church, for the men to lay down our lives so that our children would rise up in ministry, right? Um, I mean, yeah. look we are in such need if you know what if we don't if god does not grant us revival spiritual awakening in 2024 we might be writing our own book of lamentations in 2025 that's how desperate we must be Sad. Sad right? yeah. so so um i'm going to share this encouraging story uh, i was born in south korea but 75 percent of my ancestry goes back to north korea this was before the split. Mm -hmm. um, uh, all of my mom's side of the family and my dad's mom were born in what is now the capital of North Korea. It was the American missionaries, mostly uh, Presbyterian and Methodists, mm -hmm. that came to Korea knowing that it was a suicide mission. Many of them got beheaded, mm -hmm. but they continued to come from America in Europe. And by 1907, there were a few thousand Korean Christians. Okay? Eight months after Azusa Street revival of April, April of 1906, there was a gathering of young Christians. These are all first generation Christians. They met and they had a prayer gathering in February, January or February of 1907. 
Now, this was in Pyongyang, what is now the capital of North Korea. It's freezing cold. It's like North Dakota. All right? <laughs> it's worse than Michigan. <laughs> All the doors and windows were closed. And as these precious saints were praying, they all became convicted of their sins. Mm. And Amen. they began to desperately say, God, forgive me of this. Forgive me of this. And God's presence fell. And although the doors and the windows were closed because it was freezing cold outside, the wind of the Holy Spirit came into the room. Next day, they all returned to their homes, churches, and towns as embers of fire and revival ignited all throughout the region, which we, we now call North Korea. Because, it, because they were desperate. They, they realized that they were living in sin. Right? And in that place, God was so pleased, he offered his presence and revival came. And then when, when these cities and towns and churches and homes were ignited with revival fire, they went out boldly preaching the gospel. Brothers and sisters, unless we are so revived that we have no fear of man and we are sharing and demonstrating the gospel of Jesus Christ with the lost, it ain't revival. It ain't spiritual awakening. Okay? If we are going to keep the good news to ourselves, hunker down in our homes, our offices, our businesses, in our seminaries, in our churches, guess what? The devil wins. The devil wins. All right? So I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Willie in North Carolina and Timberley in Texas, would you just lead us in a desperate cry of prayer? Would you just lead us right now, Pastor Willie and Timberley? We are in need of God. Go ahead. Father, as I just said, we are in need of you. And Father, I pray for your convicting Holy Spirit. Father, it's so easy for us to see the sins of those around us and not see ourselves. Father, forgive us for that Pharisaic attitude. Forgive us, Lord, for uh, praying for things for others that we're not willing to to have for ourselves. Oh God, have mercy on us and forgive us. Lord, you invite us into your throne room to pray for mercy and grace to help in time of need. And so God, we're desperate for you. I pray God that we will come to you in our desperation, Lord, instead of having to come in devastation, Lord, because we continue to run from you. So oh God, have mercy, we pray. Lord, reveal Continue to reveal yourself to us, Lord. Reveal those areas in our lives that need to be surrendered to you. Father, forgive us for holding on to the things of this world. Forgive us, Lord, for not being fully surrendered. Oh, God, I pray for your mercy and your grace. And, Father, that you would do a work in us. That, Lord, even as the psalmist said, Lord, when you have cleansed our hearts, that, Lord, we will go to those that need to know Christ. And Father, share you with them as well. So Lord, start in us. Do a work in us, Lord, that only you can do. And Father, may it spread across our land that Lord, the lost and the saved alike would know that it came from you. And that Lord, you would uh, have your way, we pray in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, we come to you. We come running to you. We cry out to you. Father, forgive us for our, our hard-heartedness. Take our hearts of stone and make them stone hearts of flesh once again. Father God, that we lay aside, Lord God, all of the cares of the world, all of the desires, Lord God, of our eyes and our flesh, Lord. We ask you in the name of Jesus, that God, that you would grant us a grace, Father, to want nothing but you, to say to you, we just want you, Jesus. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would open up our eyes to see life around us so differently that, Father, it's not about our day-to-day -day survival or father god having all of our own desires uh, met but father 
It's about what you want. It's about what you desire. And Lord, I thank you that we have been bought with a price. Father, it is therefore now no longer we who live, but Christ who lives in us. So Lord, I pray, Father, is the seven churches each, Lord God, in the book of Revelation, had those things, Father, that tripped them up. We have those things in our churches. We have those things in our lives. And Father God, we have not prioritized you. And we have not asked you from day to day, what should our day look like? So Father, we ask you to forgive us. Forgive us our self-centeredness. And Father God, we say, let it be all about you. We desperately need you. We cry out for change in our hearts and in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And Becky, would you unmute and would you pray that the ministry of the Holy Spirit will be fully alive in the Church of America? We need all of the Holy Spirit. We need the wisdom. We need the understanding of God's Word through the Holy Spirit. We need to love with the help of the Holy Spirit. But we also need signs and wonders and miracles and healing today in America. Would you, would you just pray for that surge of Holy Spirit in our lives? Father, we need you in America like we've never needed you before. Lord, we pray that there would be an outpouring of your spirit across the land. That, Father, from, from, every, from those in the church, those outside the church, those who don't know you and those who do know you, Father, that we would be impacted and powerfully moved by the presence of God. Let us see you and hear you in ways we never dreamed possible, Lord. Let it change our lives. Let it shift the culture of America, Father. Not that we had good preachers and not that we had lots of Christian TV, but God, that there was a move of your spirit. Let those revivals that are starting on the college campuses spread everywhere. Let it spread to Hollywood. Let it spread to the schools and the universities. Let it spread to the grade schools. Let it spread to the capital cities of our nation. Father, we pray for a move and an outpouring of your spirit because that's what it's going to take, Father, for us to change. Lord, it's not about us. It's not about how talented and gifted we are and how wealth we are and that wealthy we are in this country. But Father, it's it's what 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 can we receive from you, Lord? We pray for a touch of the Holy Spirit across the land in the mighty, mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And Bill Landers, would you unmute, please? In, in one of his final messages to the, to the disciples before Jesus returning to heaven, he said, you shall receive the Holy Spirit and be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, ends of the earth. Would you pray for the peace of Jerusalem? Would you pray for salvation of Israel in Israel's greatest need since 1945? Father God, we lift up Israel, we lift up Jerusalem, the apple of your eye, Lord God, and we cry out to you in this hour of need uh, across the Middle East, Lord God, for you to rule and reign in the hearts of those who have ears to hear and eyes to see. And Father, we're asking that not one jot, not one tittle of your will and your way would be thwarted uh, over Israel, over Jerusalem. And so, Father, the enemy that has arisen up uh, this world court, Lord God, we're asking that you would push it back and put it in its place. And, Lord God, that you would have your will and your way all across Israel and uh, in Jerusalem. And, Lord, that you would do a quick work work and cut it short under righteousness all through Gaza, Lord God, that you would protect the innocent and that you would bring the enemy to the place where they need to be, Lord God. And so, Father, we're asking for uh, your rule and reign, uh, and we're asking for your physical manifestation, Lord God, of your goodness, your faithfulness, and your kindness, your expression of salvation all across the Middle East, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Christopher, man, of, man with the wings, would you unmute, please? Yep. I believe that countless numbers of angels are just waiting to be dispatched by our Father in heaven and, 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 and impact 
every state, every county, every city across America, would you pray what's in your heart? Would you ask the Father to release the angels, to encourage the body of Christ, and to uh, use his angels towards spiritual awakening? Uh, yes, Lord. Lord, uh, we just uh, welcome the host of heaven into this, into this nation into the children and into their families father lord into even just uh or we just welcome the host of heaven into the government father lord just release your angels all over our representatives all over our leaders of this nation and we just command that your will will be done in this nation lord as it is in heaven your will be done done on earth as it is in heaven lord just pour out your spirit on these children pour out your spirit on these leaders father and we just welcome you here we welcome you here father in jesus name lord your will be done your will be done your will be Amen. done and pat would you offer the final prayer for this recording this live stream would you just ask for the father's blessing just pray what's on your heart uh, as a closing prayer Oh, Father, I thank you so much that you've heard our prayer. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that you are mighty to save. I thank you, Father, that your arms are not shortened, but, Father, that you're able to do abundantly above all that we ask or even think. Father, I thank you that you're not finished with America. I thank you that you're not finished with the children. Father, I thank you, God, that you're pouring out your spirit. And God, we're just, even though we're asking big and expecting big, I thank you that your plans are so much bigger. And I thank you, God, that, that you're not going to skip generations, but that you're going to move in all the generations. And God, that we are going to see the revival, that eyes are going to be open, that the truth, the spirit of truth is breaking, is shattering, is shattering the lies of hell. And we will see revival. And I thank you, God. I thank you for that awakening, God. We praise you because our hope is in you and we believe that our hope is is founded in a solid place and you and you will do you will do your will your kingdom come your will be done in america your will be done in america thank you father thank you father and all amen. and all of god's people said amen amen, amen. Thank Amen. you so much for participating in this day 11 of 21 days of prayer for America. Uh, tomorrow, day 12, uh, all the information is posted on um, projectpray.org. And uh, let your friends know uh, whether you were joining us live or, or, or watching the recording of it. Uh, may the Lord anoint us to be a blessing unto him. And the best way to worship him is the way we love one another and as we get the gospel out together to everyone around us. So God bless you. Shalom. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Love you all. God bless you. Love Thank you, you Dice. Love God you. Bless. Thank God. you. Love you all. Love you all too. Blessings to Thanks, you all. Guys. Yes.